Today's video is sponsored by Boxu. Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, as you can see, I'm in the Christmas spirit. Uh, so Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, I hope that you all have a wonderful holiday season. This was the only Christmas hat I could find in the house and it's kind of an awful one. I don't know, it's just not very flattering and it's got bells so it's gonna be loud so I'm actually gonna not wear it. Instead, I'm gonna wear this because I think it's cuter. So yes, uh, this is going to be my Christmas um, anime figure haul and merch unboxing video. So we do actually have one Christmas present that my boyfriend bought for me. It's this one here. He's told me that it is an anime figure and that I can unbox it for the channel. So he's letting me open it a little earlier than Christmas. So yes, uh, we're gonna save that for a little bit later. And everything else I bought is just merch and figures that I bought for myself. So I guess my own Christmas present to myself. Like the last haul, a lot of this stuff has been on a boat for a few months, so a lot of these things I purchased three or so months ago, and I'm very excited to finally get into them. <laughs> First up, let's start with independent art stuff that I picked up. So in my last haul, I picked up my first ever zine, uh, and I have another one this time. It's also a Jujutsu Kaisen one. It is the domain expansion zine, and I got the one with like a ton of goodies. We have two bags of merch, the zine, and I guess some prints. In this first bag, we got washi tape, badges, stickers, an enamel pin, notepads, and stickers. In the second bag, we got a bunch of acrylic charms and stands. My personal favorite is this Yuji shaker charm where he's actually got the fingers in his mouth. That is so cute. We also got some more prints, postcards, stickers, and this very cute notepad. Finally, we have the zine itself. It's packaged so beautifully. It feels so bad opening it. It's so pretty. So here's the zine itself. It's such nice quality and inside it's a pretty 50-50 mix between art and also some fanfic stories. Very, very happy with all of that. <laughs> I think those are all the zines that I have ordered, but I do follow a few zine Twitter accounts, so that's really dangerous and I often get very tempted uh, at a few that I've seen, so I'll probably be getting more in the future. I do love getting the zine and all of the extra merch and add-ons that come with it. Next, I got some really cute stuff from, I think is a German artist. I'm not gonna try and pronounce it because I actually think I'll just butcher the name, but I put it on screen. And these are some of the coziest, cutest, most adorable prints and bookmarks ever. I have a particular soft spot for the frog prints. Also picked up this ridiculously cute to-do list to hopefully help motivate me to get all my video stuff done on time. <laughs> Next, let's jump into the merch that I received this month. As always, let's start with clear files. First up is this Hanako-kun strawberry tart clear file. Very cute, love baking themed things. Then I got these two card capture Sakura clear card clear files. I just don't see many Sakura clear files and I thought these were really beautiful so I picked them up. Finally I got this cheeseroo one from Runza Girlfriend. Next up I have this bag of merch. Next up is actually this Nendoroid faceplate. This is from the FGO Learning with Manga series. I do have the Mash Nendoroid and I do want all of the Learning with Manga faceplates. So when I saw this on pre-owned for about 900 yen, I picked it up. I love how goofy all of the Learning with Manga faceplates are. It's a shame they don't just come with all of the Nendoroids. Speaking of Nendoroids, I just picked up some more of the Nendoroid easel stands. These are very handy for displaying Nendoroids without their gross base. Oh, this is so cute that I've got this GG magnet hook so his tail folds up uh, and you can kind of hook an apron or something else onto the hook. Uh, I'm gonna put this on my fridge. It's so cute. I love slightly functional anime merch that I can like incorporate into my life somehow. Perfect. And now I have some unfunctional anime merch in the form of plushies. So I got two Sumiko Garashi plushies. I have the dust mite. I believe that's a dust mite. And I'm not too caught up on the Sumiko Garashi lore, but I believe this is a weed. Like a weed that grows in the garden. 
Yeah, these have been two of my favorite Summer Kokorashi kind of side characters, so I wanted to have uh, little plushies of them so I can hide around my house. This other plushie came out ages ago, but I saw that it was still in stock and I wanted to pick it up. It is the Rilakkuma in the cow outfit. It is very cute. Lastly, we have this itty bitty toge keychain. He looks very sweet. And this Yuru Camp thing, I don't really know what this is. <laughs> I think this is called a bromide? I don't know. It's basically a set of pictures from Nadeshko's camera from episode 8 and 9. I remember they had one for every two episodes and I picked this one because I thought Nadeshko looked the cutest in all of these. I picked these up because I thought it would be a cute thing to put on walls or pin boards for decoration. Next thing I got is a Rilakkuma mug. You can really tell I just went through the in-stock Sanex items one night and uh, bought a few things. This is an adorable Rilakkuma's house party mug. I love all the confetti and the balloons. It's very cute, but also slightly minimal. I like it. So the last piece of merch I picked up is actually a crazy splurge for me. It is this Evangelion set of badges. And this set of Ted cost me 7,000 yen means each badge was like 700 yen and the reason they're so expensive is because these are actually embroidered badges. I have two embroidered badges that I picked up from the Ghibli store as like single units and I do really love them. The fact that they're embroidered it just makes them feel high quality and different and they give off a different vibe if you were to put them on like your clothes or an eater bag they look a little bit more natural. So when I saw this Evangelion set, I knew it was a splurge, but I did want to pick up the set anyway. They all come pre-packaged because I think you're supposed to sell them individually in a store. It's like a blind box instead. These badges are really nice. I do love that they're embroidered as opposed to printed. I told myself that I could buy all 10 and then keep the ones I wanted and sell the rest because I know a lot of people do that because if you buy merch like this, you do have to buy the full set even if you're just after one or two things. But I think I'm gonna like keep all of them because I really like them. I could totally see myself making some like display with just these badges somehow. I think that would look really cool. So next up, quickly, I wanted to show you guys something that Davoom was really kind enough to send me and it is this. Yes, it's a virtual curatory pet. No, but this is actually the Davoom Pixu Max. And this is really cool. I actually already own one of the uh, smaller Davooms and I think those are so cute, but this is super luxe. This has a bigger 9.6 inch screen. We can put Rilakkuma on here. So the Pixu Max comes with this little stand so you can just rest it. Uh, on a surface but the other cool thing about it is that it also comes with suction cups so that you can mount it in your car but also you can mount it on your detolves. You can link the Devoom to your phone through the app which unlocks a wide variety of cool features such as notifications from social media, clocks and also unlocks a bunch of custom pixel art made by other users. Thanks again to Davoom for sending this out for me to try. I've just got Jibami on here now so that I can manifest a re-release of the Kotobukiya Jibami figure which if you've seen my last video I accidentally bought a bootleg of. All right now let's move on to the anime figures that I picked up this month. First off I have two Nendoroids. And they kind of go together because we have Nobara and Gojo from Jujutsu Kaisen. I'm getting these pretty late because I bought these from an Australian retailer. I do plan on getting rest of the gang. I think the Eugene Android, I pre-ordered the second release. I'm not sure when I'm getting him. And I don't have a Megami yet, but I, th I know it will happen when it happens. I have seen him in stock in places, but it'll happen when it happens. I'll buy him when it feels right. I don't know. <laughs> Let's look at Gojo first. I feel like I've heard around the grapevine that this Nendoroid wasn't as good as people wanted it to be. I don't really know why I didn't look too much into it. Don't want to spoil myself. So first impressions, I think Gojo looks pretty good. I'm not like super amazed, but 
I'm not disappointed either. Gojo comes with two entire different heads for his two hairstyles. He's got it swept up with his eye mask and also hair down showing his eyes. Gojo comes with three face plates, a standard one, a kind of smiling cheeky one, and one where he's doing like a crazy laugh. He comes with a few different arm poses as well as his glasses and some mochi. I do think I prefer this Nendoroid with his head down more. Uh, it looks a little more natural and the proportions look right to me. The second head feels a little bit too big and his hair is a little too big. I think the face looks a little off, like the mask sits a little higher than I would like. I do feel like I'm not as impressed with this Nendoroid as I usually am with others, but I do feel like they don't have a lot to work off with in regards to detail because Gojo literally just wears like an all black purple suit but maybe they could have done a little more on the shading there yeah i think this nendoroid is pretty like mid maybe that's a good way to describe it i feel like for how much i like gojo i should love this nendoroid a lot but upon opening it i'm just kind of all right with it like i'm happy to have it in my collection and i'm happy i get to start my jujutsu kaisen nendoroid collection but is this my favorite jujutsu kaisen nendoroid probably not which leads us on to Nobara, who I am a little bit more excited for. I do really like the design of her Nendoroid. After opening her, I do like the Nobara more than the Gojo. I really like her hair sculpt. I think it just matches the character perfectly. So Nobara comes with three different face plates, her standard one, a very cute smiling one, and a angry combat face plate. I think unfortunately her standard face plate makes her look a little too sad. And I know she's like, you know, a cool boss kind of energy, but she just looks sad. And I don't know if I want to display her with this face plate because of it. Nobara does come with a ton of accessories. On the fighting side, she's got her hammer, nails, and her voodoo dolls, as well as various arm pieces where her sleeves have are ripped off. She also comes with a lipstick and a mirror so she can do, you know, just girly things. I do think Nobara's body sculpt is quite well made, uh, but I did notice, and I noticed this with the Gojo as well, that kind of the pieces don't fit together as nicely as they usually do. Maybe this is a quality control thing with these Nendoroids, but her two arms just kind of fell off as I took her out of the box. Um, it just makes it a bit more of a pain when you're trying to pose these damn Nendoroids. I am happy to have those two Nendoroids now, even if they are just kind of pretty standard ones. I'm excited to collect the rest of the gang. I've got Toge and Maki pre-ordered, so yeah, I'm excited to have a Jujutsu Kaisen Nendoroid shell. Before we move on to the next item, a quick word from the sponsor of today's video, Boxu. Boxu is a subscription box which sources authentic Japanese snacks, candies, and teas from centuries-old small family businesses in Japan. All of these snacks are then packaged up in this nice little box and delivered to your door. Each month, you'll get a different Boxu with a different theme, providing you with your own gourmet journey through Japan. For my box, that is Hokkaido Holidays. One of my favorite thing about the Boxu boxes is you also get a booklet telling you about each snack in the box, its cultural significance, the family business that might create them, and also the flavor notes to watch out for so you can feel like a real food critic when you're eating all the snacks. I knew I had to try this one once I saw it in the book because I love peach and I love mochi. So this is the white peach kibi dango mochi. Apparently peach is a popular flavor for kibi dango because it's associated with the Japanese folk hero Momotaro or peach boy. <laughs> it's very nice and pink. Mmm, I love peach. <laughs> Thank you, Momo Taro. I've developed an afternoon routine where I go to the Boxy Box and I pick a snack to eat every day. Uh, and I'm very excited to try out all these Hokkaido holiday snacks. Boxu are currently hosting a Tickets to Japan giveaway. So be sure to check that out and the box in the description down below. You can use code DAIJOBUBU to get $20 off your subscription. And thanks again to Boxu for sponsoring today's video. Next up in here, I have a figure that actually led me to putting my detective hat on. Let me explain. So in here, you can kind of tell, this is the Tamaki Kotatsu figure from Kotobukiya. This is a re-release. And in the front here, I actually have the Kotobukiya store exclusive parts. This is the interesting part. So if you've seen the scale figure, 
you know that the Kotobukiya exclusive parts are a must-have for this figure. That just makes the figure. There's kind of no point to buying her if you don't get the extra parts, in my opinion. And so when I went on to pre-order her, I wanted to get the parts. So I went on to my figure collection and saw that the majority of people pre-ordered her through Kodo US. But it turns out, unlike what a lot of people assumed, Kodo US is not actually the US Kotobukiya store. So I kind of put my detective hat and did a bit of digging because I've always been confused by this. So originally, back in 2006, KotoUS.com was actually just a fan club run by Kotobukiya Japan. You couldn't actually buy anything, it was just a site with like figure news and pictures and stuff. Then at some point I found this archive from 2016. Uh, Kodo US starts selling figures as a company called Kodo Inc. And at this point, they are actually operating as Kodo Bukia's US subsidiary. Like their website says copyright Kodo Bukia. And if you go to their about page, it actually says Kodo Inc. represents Kodo Bukia for the North American market. Still with me? <laughs> so after that, they split. But what gets complicated is that Kodo Inc. actually stays on as a Kodo Bukia distributor which is just the same as any other store that is a Kotobukiya distributor. This is where it gets misleading for a lot of customers since when they see the store Kodo US, they just assume that that means Kotobukiya US, especially since they do sell all the Kotobukiya with the exclusive parts. However, there have been instances where customers have actually missed out on this. Kind of like if I had a store on gscus.com and I had an orange color scheme, people would probably think I'm Good Smile US, just like there is actually a Good Smile US, which is the official Good Smile US store. <laughs> but I do think it's kind of funny that Kota US is not Kotobukiya US like I thought, and that the Kotobukiya Twitter likes to remind people of this a lot of the time. <laughs> Sorry if any of the history was wrong, but bottom line is Kodo US is not operated by Kotobukiya, which actually doesn't matter to me anyway, since I can't buy from Kodo US and ship them to Australia, it's too expensive. But it did mean that I was stuck in a situation where I couldn't get these damn exclusive parts because unfortunately, Kodo Bikia Japan doesn't let you buy off their store using proxy sites, which is what I would have done. So instead, I did find a listing on Hobby Genki that sold this figure with the exclusive parts uh, and they were able to ship them to Australia, so that is what I did. I'm very excited to get into this figure. You can see here are the Kota Vikir exclusive parts. They're real, they exist. So I didn't buy these figures in their first release because I actually hadn't seen Fire Force. And like, I'm not gonna lie, it was actually seeing like this figure and how cute it was with the cat ears that got me to watch it when I saw it was getting a re-release. I was like, oh, it's getting re-released? Time to uh, watch the anime so I can buy the cute figure. <laughs> I'm sure I'm not the only figure collector that's watched something because of a really cute figure from that show. Here is the figure without the bonus parts. I do think she's actually really cute without them, even though I did shit on her without them. My immediate favorite thing about this figure is the base. I think it's genius that they incorporated the smoke with the base. It just makes the figure look so natural standing there and fits the theme of the anime. The rest of the figure is also really well done. I love how they've sculpted the jacket and the pants. You can really tell that they're kind of blowing in the wind and there's emotion in them. And the detailing on the outfit is really nice as well. I also think her face and hair look really cute in this figure. The figure is a little bit on the small side. It is a 1 8th, um, but it's not one of those 1 8ths that feel like a 1 7th. All right, and now I've gone and put the exclusive parts on. Uh, they took ages to put on. I think, I don't know if it was just me because I insisted on trying to do it without looking up pictures. And then I was like, I don't know how these fit together. I had to look it up anyway, but it took me like five to ten minutes um, for everything to stay. But she looks amazing! Honestly, adding these parts just like elevates the figure so much. It's the extra pop of color and the added kind of dynamics around her just really tie everything together for me. I did want to quickly shout out Hobby Genki, which is where I was able to get Tamaki and her exclusive parts from. They actually reached out to me a couple months ago saying, hey, um, you know, we'd like to work with you to promote our site, but I usually don't promote any stores that I haven't bought from personally. 
uh, just so I could vouch for that service. But now that I've bought a figure from their store, I can talk about my experience. I was happy that they sewed Kotobukiya figures with the exclusive, something that was really hard for me to find as an Australian. Um, I also had to change my shipping address at some point after my pre-order. That was really easy to do. The store was opened by two friends that are also really into figure collecting and collecting other Japanese stuff. So they're really passionate about trying to share that with the rest of the world. Their prices can be pretty competitive as well. For some of the figures that I've been looking to pre-order, they actually had cheaper prices than say Ami Ami. So I've added them to my repertoire of sites that I use when I'm buying figures. So I'll leave their link in the description down below and you can check it out if you want. I have one other figure and then we can open <laughs> my Christmas present. Um, and the other figure I have is the Love Live School Idol Festival Honecker 1 7th White Day Virgin scale figure by Alta. So this figure is to go with the Katori figure from the set that I picked up earlier in the year. I mentioned in that video that I wanted the Hanukkah to go with her because I think the two of them would look fabulous together. This is a pre-owned figure. I picked her up for around 13,000 yen and she originally retailed for 15,800. So same as the Katori, I think the popularity of the OG Love Live girls has gone down. So the prices of their figures have gone down, which is good for me because I think this figure is beautiful and I'm happy to get them for a bargain. Wow. Oh my God. This figure is beautiful. It is stunning. Ulta has done it again. They have delivered on their standard of amazing quality scale figures. I love all of the super delicate details on this. All of the chains, the ribbons, the glitter, all of the gold detailing. It is all so well done. There's so many different textures and finishes to the outfit. It's just amazing to look at. Just like the Katori, Hanukkah is kneeling, which I really like um, having that variety of height in my collection. I'm really shocked to say this because I am a huge Katori fan, but I actually think the Hanukkah figure is better. Comparing both of them side by side, I think the Konaka just has a lot more details to her outfit than the Katori and it's a little bit more visually interesting. So I'm super glad to have her now to complete my little duo. Yes, there is a third Umi in the set, but I think I'm gonna pass on her. I'm not that in love with the way that the dress looks and the figure. And I think actually putting the three of them together, she kind of stands out in a bad way. Just doesn't fully match. Yay! All right, now it's time for my Christmas present. <laughs> I'm actually so excited to see what he got me. From the box, I really have no idea. I'd say it's like probably a one seventh figure. I'm trying to go through all the figures in my wish list that are about this size. All right, I'm gonna open it. <laughs> it's an Evangelion Kotobukiya figure. And of course it is the Evangelion Asuka Kotobukiya 1-6 figure. Um, I have one of this for a long time. This is one that's been on my wish list for a while. I'm gonna go thank him. <laughs> All right, I'm back. Um, I'm very happy to receive this. Uh, so Kotobukiya do a few 1-6 Asuka figures. They have like a ton. They have a standing one, which I'm not obsessed with because I think she's a little bit like slouching. There's one where she's kind of like this, which I'm not too in love with either. And so I came to the conclusion that this one was my favorite of the Kotobukiya 1-6 Asukas. And I also love that she's kind of kneeling. And so in my Asuka self, she'd be a good kind of mid height figure. So we have all the short, mid, and then the tall boys. And it's like this really nice composition. I think I went on about those exact things to my boyfriend, which is probably why he picked it up for me. So I'll need to get the details from him. I think this is pre-owned. I'm not sure from where. I think some of these Kotobukiya 1-6 actually get pretty expensive in the aftermarket, but we'll take a look at the prices after I get her out. Hello. She is big. Yeah, this is definitely a 1-6. So she leans on this unit to rock. So I've got her set up. I'm gonna leave her here because she's obviously a bit of a balancing act figure, but I think she is amazing. 
My immediate impression of this figure was the sheer size. I think this is definitely a 1.6, especially if I compare her with my other Asuka figures. I really like her pose in this figure, although it is a little bit awkward from some angles, it's just so different from all of the other figures I own of Asuka that I think she's going to work really well in the shelf. I love that she's leaning on this stone unit 2 statue, it's just another nice touch. All of the details on her suit and helmet are really well done, there's a lot of different finishes and textures here. The only thing I'm not completely in love with is the colour of her hair. I find there's a lot of variety in Asuka hair colours in figures and this one's just a little bit too kind of brown toned for me, like maybe a little bit more orange or a yellow tone, I don't really know, but I just, it's not my favourite. <laughs> so looking at her pricing, she originally retailed for 8,800 yen, which is such a crazy steal. She's had three releases. Um, I did miss out on her 2021 re-release. The pre-orders sold out really quickly on Ami Ami and then I just kind of forgot about it. But I can see this one's on Solaris for like 28,000 yen pre-owned. That seems ridiculously overpriced. I'll do a check on Yahoo Japan auctions later and see kind of more regular prices for what she goes for. Um, and then I'll ask my boyfriend how much he paid. See if he got a good deal. <laughs> Hope he did. All right, um, that is everything for today. I'm very happy with my Christmas present here and also with everything else that I picked up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Once again, I hope you have a good holiday season or Christmas if you celebrate it. Yeah, I hope you have a good week and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.